I'm Mary Ellen Lucas, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been watching social media, I've been watching mainstream media, and I hear all of these things. I see these protests all about Black Lives Matter. It's about time that people realize a few things that I was watching on social media with people coming out about the truth about Jesus Christ. Jesus was Mid Eastern, it's true. He wasn't white, he was re imaged by those people who believe that they carry the truth. And in reality, we find that they have no truth. Or the truth that they had, they omitted, they changed, they re-imaged him for their own goals. Jesus Christ was not Catholic. Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ. If you want to believe he's God, which we do in our Eastern, East, Eastern religion, then he's God to you. If he was a prophet, he was a prophet. But the truth is, you can't take away from this person what he tried to do for this world. He came in as a minority. He came in on his own authority. He came into this world to give us those things that are true. He didn't come in as a white man. He didn't come in here to argue the fact that one uh, culture was greater than another. He talked to everybody. He taught everyone. He was with all genders. He had in his power the ability to talk to anyone who wanted to talk with him and to teach how to live the law that God gave, which was love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. You don't say that Jesus Christ taught against gays. You can't say Jesus Christ taught against blacks. You can't image him to be someone that he is not. But for so many years, 2,000 years, Jesus Christ was made and re-imaged for the goals of one particular Christian Catholic religion. I'm sorry that people see him this way and they wonder, where is God now? Maybe what you're looking at is not protest. It's not hatred. It's not rebellion. What we're facing right now is persistent memory. Persistent memory is that memory which comes from everyone's heart to say something is really wrong. No, I don't think it's right for any race to fight another race. I think what it has to be is every race has to recognize that God made all races. And no one religion, no one race has the right to put anyone else there. God made us to love each other, love your neighbor, not love only these. Christ did not come into this world to divide as we were taught in the Bible and scriptures. I'm sorry, that's not true. God wouldn't create you so that everyone would hate you. He brought all people together. And just as he has all different kinds of angels, he made all different kinds of people and we make up that mystical body of God. There is no one greater. But I sit here and I listen and I watch people struggling to be noticed. And I understand that. Because for 2,000 years, we wanted him noticed because he knew what it was like. Everything true about Jesus Christ was taken away. He defended women. He stood for all people. But you would never know that. And it's about time that people did. If you believe he was a prophet, then he was a prophet for all people. If you believe that he segregated people, you're wrong. He did not. He spoke to everyone. He gave life and worth and the, the value of life to everyone who came to hear him talk. That's why he was loved. He defended women. He took his wife with him. Most people don't even know he was married. His parables, his stories 
all of these examples of how you should live came from his own personal life. And today, you wouldn't know that. Everyone wonders, why would God punish everyone? God didn't punish anyone. We're punishing each other. Jesus, coming from a minority of people, when you're thinking about a man of color, is what I believe in the hearts of everyone struggling and finding and looking for equality. He was an equalist. He tried to show everyone how to live according to what God wants. Who has the right to change that? Who has the right to say that white people, black people, yellow, whatever you want to say, has the right over anyone else? Jesus came on and the authority of God to teach us how to love God or a, a higher being. We, we can't even have people agree that there's a God simply because we can't agree what kind of God there is. Way back, they didn't understand him and he, of course, did not fit the bill for a Messiah because people thought Messiah should be one way. He did not fit the bill as the one to represent a patriarchal religion. And just like today, he's his own person. The truth always comes in persistent memory. Persistent memory won't quit until it's recognized as truth. That's what persistent memory is. It won't die. Women won't give up. Races won't give up. And let's take marriage, for example. Look how marriage has been destroyed by making women less than who they are, by keeping people of the same sex apart from each other. And you have no right to judge this. If God put people of all types into this world, who are we as a people to set the standard for what is right? What we were to do was to unite as a people, as a human family, recognizing that there are differences, maybe in skin color, maybe in creeds, maybe in color, maybe in gender. But the truth is, we are all one human family. So protesting and rioting, wherever it's originating from, I'm praying that it's coming from your heart, the heart of this persistent memory, that God wants us to recognize that when he spoke about people and when Jesus spoke of a perverse and unbelieving people, was talking to his own apostles. He wasn't talking to any particular gender. He wasn't talking to any particular creed or race. He was showing at that moment how stubborn and how headstrong some people are that they won't bend to see exactly what it is that God wants. God is love. God cannot be made to look as though he's a God of hatred. And anyone who had contributed to those factors, or those characteristics of who Jesus was, I'm sorry. You're the one that's dividing everyone. You're setting a human standard, a human consciousness standard that is not right. No human being has to write the right to judge other human beings. They have, however, the commandment that says, love your neighbor. Don't set a standard that you can't live up to because God would judge you by that standard. Thank you.